Hello NCA. I greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I also extend a warm welcome to everyone joining here today. It's always good to gather together and worship and give praises to our Lord. The psalmist in Psalms chapter 150 says, Praise the Lord, praise God in His sanctuary, praise Him in His mighty heavens, praise Him for His acts of power, praise Him for His surpassing greatness. As we begin our service for the day, let's look to God in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you today with our hearts full of thanksgiving for your greatness and for your grace and love and mercy upon our life. As a church, we are called your children and we have come here together to worship you, to give our honor to you. I pray that as we prepare our hearts to attend this service, may you be with us, we invo invoke your presence in our midst, May you enable us to feel your presence as we sit through the service. All this I ask in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's all worship together by singing this song. Hosanna. Shall we all look to God in prayer? Our loving God, we thank you for this wonderful morning that you have given us. We thank you that even through this medium we are able to come together in this manner this Sunday as well. Lord, we thank you that you have been with us all throughout the past week as well. We want to give you glory for the wonderful and successful event that the 
Working People Youth Fellowship were able to organize under the team crisis discussion. Lord, we pray that you will continue to be with all the people who, have, who were able to attend this event and let them continue to be blessed and to also be a blessing to the people around them. We want to in particular pray for RZIM. We thank you for this wonderful and dynamic group. We pray that you will continue to be with them and continue to mold this team and let them be a bigger channel of blessing to all of us here in this country and also beyond. Lord, our health being the most important element for all of us this entire year, we thank you that you have kept us all safe and also with sound health and mind. We want to pray and give you praise for the recovery that our brother Theodore has been experiencing in his life. And even as we look forward to him being discharged in the coming month, may your grace be upon him and allow him and enable him to experience your healing all the more in his life. We also want to pray for our ushering core leader, Sen Solong, who has not been feeling well. And also we pray for uh, Mr. Arpit Desai's mother who had a heart attack. We pray that you will continue to be with them and let them experience your healing, your love and your peace even, they, even as they go through this phase of their life. We just want to surrender each one of their lives into your hands. And to all of us, Lord, we just want to pray for our health May you continue to keep us all in uh, good health. And even as we look forward to spending Christmas and New Year in the coming month, we pray that we pray for all the people and families who are still mourning the death of their loved ones. Lord, may your comfort and your peace be upon them. We also want to pray for all the different organizations here in this world. In particular, Lord, we pray for the research centers who have been working day in and day out, Lord, in discovering, inventing, and figuring out a cure to this virus. Lord, may your special wisdom and knowledge be upon them. And in very soon, we, all of us here, we will be able to also witness and experience how great you are as we see the end of this pandemic and as we witness the end of this pandemic as well. Lord, and to all of us here, I pray that we will be able to find joy in the little things of our lives and through it see how great you are all the more. We surrender our lives, the service ahead of us, and also our lives and the days ahead of us into your hands. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. The song calls Pearl Belongs. Let your feet, I'll 
passing through the night Oh God, the battle belongs to you Belongs to you And if you are for me Who can be against me? For Jesus is nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Thank you, God. When all I see are the cross, God, you Fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I let your feet. I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And all my knees. For us, nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadow. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. And Almighty Fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the Deuteronomy 14.23 tells us that the purpose of tithing is to teach us to keep God first. On that note, please join me as I pray. Thank you, Father God, for being the most merciful and faithful Father, Father. I thank you and I praise your name for always coming through for your people. You are our Jehovah Jireh, Father, the Lord who provides. Thank you, Father God, for providing for each one of us in times of our need. Thank you, Father God, for being there for us when things seemed low and things didn't seem to go our way. But I want to thank and praise your name, Father, for you stay true to your word and your nature and that you always come and help us and deliver us as we come before you with our offerings and tithes with grateful hearts, Father, we come and give them and lay them at your feet, Father, to use it for your glory. Let all that we have come up with and have given it back to you, Father, from all that you have given to us in the first place. I pray, Father, that you bless it and that you use it for the extension of your kingdom. I thank and praise your name, Father, for 
helping those who were in need and i know that these tithes and offerings will help those who are in need as well father i thank and praise your name for our wonderful church that has come together and that always always keeps you first father help us to learn that not just in finances but help us to keep you first in everything else that we do especially during this uh thanksgiving week father i pray uh and i with grateful heart come before you father and thank you for everything that you've done and given for us and i pray for all of us over here thank you father for taking care of us and providing for us in jesus most matchless name i pray amen good morning church i thank god for giving me another opportunity to share his word to all of us today i would like to speak on the topic living in the open mindedness of god basing on the text exodus chapter 4 verses 10 to 17. this scripture passage gives us a clear evidence about human's weak mindedness and god's open mindedness it is an account of personal conversation between Moses and God at Mount Horeb, also known as Mount Sinai. Let me say a short prayer before we go further. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer. Amen. The passage chosen for today's meditation is from the book of Exodus chapter 4 verses 10 to 17. Moses said to the Lord, O Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, Who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, O Lord, please send someone else to do it. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses and he said, What about your brother, Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you, and his heart will be glad when he sees you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. But take this staff in your hand so you can perform miraculous signs with it. This is the Word of God. This special encounter between Moses and the sovereign God happened when Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law into the farther side of Midian desert and came to Mount Horeb. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the form of flames of fire within a bush mentioned in chapter 3 verse 1 to 2 and thus the calling of the Lord came to Moses and the story follows in verse 10 Moses' response to the calling was a response of that of usual humans weak mindedness weak, weak minded in other words is lack of determination emotional strength or intellectual capacity here we can see Moses as a weak-minded person. It is because of his over-anticipation about his inadequateness and imperfectness despite of four demonstrations to him about God's sovereignty by the sovereign God himself. Firstly, Moses asked God, what is your name? And God instantly replied to Moses, I am who I am or I will be what I will be. 
mentioned in chapter 3 verses 13 to 14. For the first time ever, God revealed his personal name with a deeper meaning in front of Moses. Before this time, God's people knew him as Elohim, translated as God. The name I am who I am clearly describes God's self-existence, eternal power, and unchanging character. And as the living God who is active in history and at present. This name can also mean I can be and can do anything. In other words, God is telling Moses, I am the God of actions and you will know who I am when you see me in action. God revealed himself to Moses in a special and personal manner, which, is no, which no one had ever experienced before. Secondly, even after this personal and special revelation, Moses asks for a visible or tangible sign to validate his God's appointed leadership before the Hebrew when demanded. Mentioned in chapter 4 verse 1. When Moses' effort staff falls on the ground, it turned into a snake and it turned back into a staff in his hand. In chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. The Egyptians worship goddess Wadzid, and the Pharaoh's crown was treated with her Kovra image, symbolizing sovereignty and authority. Moses should have understood well that this miracle has a symbolic threat, pose the power and sovereignty of Pharaohs in Egypt. Thirdly, Moses was told to put his hand inside his cloak, and when he pulled it out, his hand was infected with leprosy. Mentioned in chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It must be a terrifying sight because leprosy was an incurable and dreadful disease in that time, and even considered as a curse or divine punishment. When we see in Numbers chapter 12, verses 10 to 13. But the speed of getting infected and receiving of complete cure was an amazement. This miracle is an acted parable to show that the Hebrews' misery and brutal control in Egypt will be over very soon because God is going to deliver them. Fourthly, in Exodus chapter 4 verse 9, God instructed Moses to take some water from the Nile River and to pour that water on the dry ground, to which the water will transform into blood. This was to show that Yahweh is sovereign over the Nile River because the Egyptians considered the Nile as the bloodline, blood life of Egypt. They believe that the Nile River is the giver and sustainer of life in the land. Moses is still not convinced even after witnessing miraculous signs and divine revelation. In verse 13, Moses pleaded God to send someone else to do the special assignment. At the first instance, I find that Moses was attracted and curious when he first saw the burning bush. In chapter 3, verse 3, Moses said, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. Here we see that Moses even tried to come closer to the holy crown. He was attracted and curious, maybe because he has not seen the bigger picture that is to take place and the leadership role that he has to take up. After God described in details about his plan to deliver his people from their misery in Egypt, there was a drastic change in his attitude. It is because he focuses more on his weaknesses and turns a blind eye on the sovereignty of Yahweh who calls him. Perhaps it can be applicable to us as well. In our modern society, people are attracted towards positions and authority in any given organizational setup. 
Just like Moses' curiosity before the burning bush, we are curious to have a taste of power and authority, which are quite appealing. But when responsibilities that are bigger than our capabilities are placed on us, we tend to make excuses like Moses, who said, Oh Lord, please send someone else to do it. Yes, Moses may be weak and imperfect, but God wasn't asking him to work alone. God will empower him with all the resources and authorities that Moses needed. And God even promised him to provide words, strength, courage, and ability which he lacks for the task. In the same way, you and I may feel inadequate for the job God calls us to do, but the Lord can act through us to achieve his will and purpose. The assurance is found in chapter 4 verses 11 to 12, which is direct and affirming. The Lord said to Moses, Who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you. Speak and will teach you what to say. Here in verse 11, God used again his divine name, I, the Lord, to show that he is God who empower the one whom he calls to do his will. So instead of hiding behind our inadequacies and weaknesses, we will better look beyond ourselves to the open-mindedness of the Lord. The God who called Moses is open-minded. If we see the chapter 4 verse 7, 14 to 17, Moses continues to refuse to accept the calling. And the Lord became angry with him. But this anger is not consuming fire. Instead, the Lord graciously presents an appropriate solution to address Moses' fear, anxiety, and the feeling of inadequacy. He proposed Aaron to be his spokesperson. In that moment itself, Aaron was already on his way to meet his brother Moses. This implies that the solution was a divinely planned and ordained, which comes out from the vast knowledge of God. The term open-minded can be understood as someone who is willing to consider new ideas. Thus, it implies knowledge and understanding. Our God is a God who is rich in knowledge, who loves to bring in new ideas and plan, thrilling plans for his people. Psalms 139 verse 6 says that such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. The scope of God's knowledge is too wonderful and so it is impossible for us to understand it. That's why Moses was not able to comply with the calling. But the Lord has in mind to take out Moses from his old way of life into a brand new life, which will be full of wonders, excitements, and thrilling experiences. The Lord instilled in him everything. For verse 15 says, I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. And at the end, Moses grabs his separate staff mentioned in verse 17, the symbol of God's power and authority, and left for Egypt to face the greatest challenge of his life. And today, the scripture is his power and authority given to us, which is empowering and encouraging us in times of challenging days like this. We might be pressed hard from all sides because of the pandemic, but let us trust and dwell in the open-mindedness of God, and He will plan for us a brand new life, full of wonders, excitements, and thrilling experiences, just as He planned for Moses. To conclude, many times 
we will be tempted to focus more on our weaknesses, inadequateness to carry out certain responsibilities, and to focus more on our problems caused by this world. When such temptations suit at us, we should look beyond ourselves to the open-mindedness of Yahweh, the sovereign God. In the same way, God revealed to Moses that I am the God of actions and you will know who I am when you see me in action, is disclosing his power to us even today. For Hebrew chapter 13 verse 8 says, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Moses had witnessed God who he claims to be throughout his life, and we will be able to witness the same when we surrender into his divine will and trust him with all our hearts. May God bless us all. So we pray. Father, thank you for the word that has come afresh to us this morning, reminding us who you are and what you have done in the past and at present as well. For the many a times, we focus more on our inadequateness, weaknesses. But Lord, you are God who can do anything because you reveal in a way that you are in control of everything. And Lord, we just have to trust in you. Lord, you have many good plans for us, many good things ahead of us. And Lord, we long for those things to come to us and to live in your open-mindedness. Father, may you continue to bless us, to shine for you and to live for you, O Lord. Once again, thank you for reminding us through this word. And now as we depart, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit may raise and abide with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.